a big thing that I like to look at and a good example would be looking at food. So we've talked about just the environment we want to raise kids in and how we want them to think about food. This doesn't mean I'm going to have a child track macros when they are 10 years old. You can learn about food outside of tracking macros. So it's about the environment that I'm putting forth and teaching them about food, talking about it in a way that they are going to build a positive relationship with food. And I think it's the same thing with exercise as I want it to be building a positive relationship with exercise because we've all seen how people or even yourself can have a very negative relationship with exercise. And so my biggest thing as far as pre-adolescent and adolescent kids would just be building an environment and a conversation for them to understand why they're doing it and the benefits of doing it and finding what is going to be fun for them. Because I mean, I know even between like our siblings, we are very different from our siblings. um, And it's like something that I would have enjoyed at that time versus them enjoying at that time. I wouldn't want to squeeze someone into a box, but I would want to give them the option to be able to explore different boxes, so to speak, of what movement or what play looks like. And then I think it's also great if you are active yourself of being able to bring your kids along um, and to have them see you and use you as an influence. Um, And that's really important, especially when we talk with clients. A lot of the feedback has been like, now I feel like I can raise my kids and teach them about this exercise and this food, and they're going to have a better experience than myself. And we've even talked about that between Alex and I of like, hey, when we have kids, they're going to be in a spot that they're going to learn about food. They're going to learn about exercise and what its place is and how to build that relationship. And so let's say you're a cyclist, like being able to, if your kid is too young to cycle, like getting the little tent that goes along with it, like bring them to enjoy the stuff. If you're in your gym lifting, then maybe you just bring your kid along and you have them do some some body weight squats. They want to be involved. A lot of the clients that I have that had home gyms, their kids wanted to be in there with them. And even just our friends who have very young kids, they want to be in there and they have like a play lifting set and they go in and they just want to do what their mom and dad is doing. So I think that it's really about building up the conversation and letting them learn about what they're doing. And then as they come into that adolescence of being able to structure what's going to be best, because I know that for myself, um, I've talked about like, I wish I had the coordination. Um, I wish I had the muscle. I wish I had the the body ability that I have now when I was in high school, because I feel like I could be so much better at the sports that I did. And at that time, I didn't have the expert guidance like you guys did of having Josh and having someone who was very committed and very knowledgeable about what was going on. I had people that meant well, but didn't have the background to really teach me how to utilize my body. And so I look at kids that might have not just been superstars starting off within sports, where it's like, I feel like I could have been a lot better in sports. And that also would have changed kind of my mentality, not only towards my body and its ability, but also just towards like, what do I want to do? What am I capable of? Because at that point, I just felt like I can't accomplish this. And this is how my body is. Um, So I think that there's definitely, um, um, it's very multifaceted, and it goes into the environment that is being created and how things are being talked about as far as how it fits a situation um, and being able to get kids involved just within movement as a whole.